If you do not have a bulletin, the service of morning prayer begins on page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer. I will give you as a light to the nations that, thy, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your knees to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Venite. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, we are, his. we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We will read Psalm 29, which is found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 620. 620, we will read responsively by whole verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of slander. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon sickest like a calf and Mount Hermon. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice, the voice of the, the Lord, Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord are all are crying glory. The, the Lord, Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Canticle 12, the song of creation, can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 88 or in your service leaflet. Let us say it together. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. The second reading is from the book of Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We will read Canticle 21 together. It is found on the Book of Common Prayer on page 95. You are God, we We praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praises you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death. You opened the great heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to the glory everlasting.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be ever pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, wouldn't it be amazing to live in some sort of precedented time? I don't think precedented is even a word, actually. I ended up typing this sermon instead of handwriting it like I often do. And the spell checking app kept asking if I meant to say something else. But wouldn't it feel better to wake up each day and wonder and not wonder what was going to happen next? I think in some ways we've all reached a bit of of numbness with everything that's going on in our world. Oh, sure, there are things that will always outrage a segment of the population, events that will bring joy to one group and cause another to clutch their pearls. But there's so much happening so fast that it it often feels like we've been drinking from a fire hose for well more than 10 months now. I mean, back in the spring and early summer of last year, defense agencies from multiple nations confirmed video evidence of alien activity in the skies above Earth, and most of humanity was like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever, move on. I think about all that we are living through as I pondered and reflected about what it must have been like when Jesus showed up to be baptized by his cousin John. I'd say it's pretty hard to wrap our heads around what life must have been like during Jesus' time on earth. His nation was occupied by a foreign army, had a puppet ruler. There was a different kind of economy, a different society, a different religious structure, all of that. But what we do know, or at least can infer, is that Jesus disrupted the status quo to bring in those on the margins of society, the ones whom economic and religious and societal structures had pushed to the sides, the ones for whom all those structures saw as expendable or whom they could exploit to build up their own power base. But Jesus came and turned all of that over. The ripple effect of his life and work has continued for 2,000 years. And we, as followers of Jesus, have certainly got it wrong on more than one occasion, including in our own lifetimes. But we've gotten it right in so many places as well. Ritual purification had been a part of Judaism for several generations by the time John and Jesus came along. The act of having water poured over you or or being fully immersed as a sign of being cleansed of your uncleanness was nothing really new. What made John's work different was that he was calling people to change their whole lives and their whole way of living. There was a feeling that people did more than, were more than fine doing the things they knew were outside the expectations of their faith simply because they could go get washed up and be seen as acceptable in the eyes of God or at least in the eyes of religious leadership. But John and Jesus had a different idea. Repent, turn, change, Don't do the same things over and over again and expect the same result. John certainly had his approach to preaching this change, and Jesus had his approach as well. John called the religious leaders of his time a brood of vipers. Jesus touched the unclean. John publicly called out Herod for his ugly and dirty ways. Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. John called people fruitless trees who should be tossed into the fire. Jesus went down to the muddy waters of the River Jordan to be baptized. The season of Epiphany is about seeing and celebrating and sharing all the ways we see Christ in the world. Most importantly, it's about the unexpected ways we see Jesus being revealed in the world around us. In some ways, it is the pinnacle of Jesus' identity as Emmanuel, God with us. The Magi represent our understanding that Jesus is and was for all people, not just his own people, 
because the Magi were not of the same faith or ethnic lineage as Jesus, and yet they came to honor him, to bestow royal gifts to him. And some legends tell us they became the first to tell of this one who was born king of the Jews. Years later, Jesus would be called God's son as he is coming up out of those dirty waters of the River Jordan. Jesus' baptism is reported in all four Gospels, and all four tell the story from a slightly different angle. Mark's version, the one we hear today, tells us that as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart. At the end of Mark's Gospel, we read that as Jesus breathed his last, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Neither moment should be mistaken for a gentle rip or a slight opening. It's an incarnational moment where heaven and earth are brought in closer proximity than even what we saw Saturn and Jupiter a few weeks ago. Jesus' baptism should serve as a reminder to us about how God chooses to live in the world. That God chose humility. God chose accountability. God chose love. And if we are truly to be followers of Jesus, it is a reminder of how we should choose to be in the world too. That we should choose humility, accountability, and love. Can you imagine what this world would look like if we all exhibited a little more humility and also if we didn't tolerate a lack of humility in others? And I don't mean like not tooting your own horn or, or sharing some accomplishment that you're proud of. I mean, actually listening to the experience of others, especially those on the margins whose voices have been silenced or muted for so long. Those are the same ones that Jesus brought in. The same people Jesus touched when no one else would. It means listening to understand, not to respond. It means reading scripture through the lens of love to help us better know how to live this life that God gave us. It means not tolerating or excusing those who intend to achieve harm either through their words or actions. If you know me at all, then this next statement will not surprise you. Humility and accountability and love were most definitely not on display on Wednesday by the mob who besieged the Capitol building. Despite some who carried so-called Christian flags and signs, there was nothing Christ-like about the evil behavior we saw unfolding. And there is nothing Christ-like about the plans and intentions we continue to learn about as this investigation continues to happen. It showed the very worst of what America can be. And I am heartbroken that Christian symbolism was anywhere near associated with it. Humility, accountability, and love are the core of what we might call Christian citizenship. It's not just about voting, it's about standing up for what is right, advocating and working for justice, equality and social change, systemic change, and the common good. Not just what is good for a few people at the top. There is nothing about following Jesus, like most of life, there's nothing about following Jesus that is a spectator sport. It requires our active engagement a daily expression of our desire to be a part of this Jesus movement. Being a follower of Jesus now more than ever requires an intentional choice to embrace our loving, liberating, life-giving God and all the ways that God empowers us to be the light of Christ in a world that so desperately needs to see it. In a few minutes, we will renew our baptismal covenant. The words are in the bulletin that is uh, linked in the comment section of our YouTube feed. It's also on our website. And if you have a Book of Common Prayer available, it's on page 292. 
It is for us as Episcopal followers of Jesus, the core statement of our beliefs and our faith in action. There are five questions about how we live out our faith with God and among our neighbors. Questions about serving Christ by serving others. An invitation to live as though we might be the only example of Jesus some people might ever see. As we get to those questions about how we live out that faith, I encourage you to pause and ponder before you say, I will with God's help. To think about what it means for you, for those in your life, and indeed what it might mean for our world. Again, turning to the Book of Common Prayer, page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
he ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and, whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life in his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, Keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of our Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On page 824. O oh, eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities especially those in our community where members of this parish teach and learn, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, 
new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom, and grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A colic for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. A Thanksgiving for National Life is found on page 838 of the Book of Common Pair. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, though we often destroy them. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty which has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we have often hidden from its light. In we thank you for the faith we have inherited in all its rich varieties. It sustains our life, though we have been faithless again and again. Renew Renew us. Us. Help us, O oh Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people, with many voices in one united chorus, will glorify your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen.